previously from part one and part two. We were climbing the Breikestolen in Norway. Cruised to Kirkwall where we chopped off the head of the infamous Black Piety. Did a glacier tour near Reykjavik in Iceland and enjoyed the Skogafoss waterfalls. on Earth that offer the same biodiversity as Iceland. This island has everything for any type of traveler. Waterfalls, hot springs, volcanoes and breathtaking glaciers. Iceland offers a house of beauty no matter the season. Our next stop is Eiserfjör town in the northwest of Iceland. Either for you or means a fjord of ice. We find this sleepy town at the Skultur's Fjordur Fjord, with a population of about 2,600. Either for you is the largest settlement on the peninsula. The climate of Either for you is tundra. It is cold in winter and cool in summer. To the Landnammer book, also the book of settlement, the town was first settled by the Viking Helgi Magri Holofsen in the 9th century. It became later a thriving post for foreign merchants from all over the known world. We did not book a tour in either for tour. So we had the day for ourselves to roam around the town and landscape. Just a little bit of town and the rest nature. a mixed bag, rain and sunshine. The highlight of the day are the Gaudafoss waterfalls. They are top rated and the producers for the TV series The Vikings pick this waterfall as a worthy backdrop for their production. And here they are. The name Gaudafoss means priest or chieftain, and there is an interesting story to it. When Iceland was first settled in the 9th century, the vast majority, except the slaves, were Vikings who followed the old Norse religion, worshipping several gods like Thor, Odin, Loki, and Freya. And when they died, 
they went to Valhalla, meaning going to heaven in the Christian belief. Because things are always on the move, there was pressure from Norway, the motherland, to convert from the pagan belief to Christianity. They didn't like it and were not exactly happy and resisted with the stubbornness of a typical Viking. it seemed that Norway would almost certainly invade the country if they were to stand by their pagan beliefs. The threat got the Vikings in Iceland onto their feet and they went in battle dress, including axe, swords and knives to their yearly meeting place, the Pink Redliff. The Pink Redliff has some exciting history and is also a geological interesting place. It was the site of the Albing, the annual parliament from 930 AD to 798 AD. The interesting part is that it lies in a rift valley that marks the crest of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge and the boundary between the North American and Eurasian tectonic plates. It is the only place in the world where this rift is above sea level and nowhere in the world can you see the edges of both plates as clearly as in Ping Radliff. Once a year, the Vikings met at the Ping Radliff, which is also called the Fields of Parliament to discuss pressing matters and this time the topic was about their religion. When the heated discussion was over, the priest or Gaudi was given the responsibility to make a decision. The story goes that he lay under a fur blanket for a day and a night in silence, praying to his old gods for the right decision. Eventually he surfaced and said, for the good of the people, Christianity would be the official religion, but pagans could practice in private. To symbolize his decision, he returned to his home and threw all the islands of the old gods into the waterfall. Since then, it was known as Gaudafoss, the waterfalls of the gods. The days in Iceland were interesting, fun and excitement. The people, the history, the landscape, the climate, everything is so different from Australia. Thumbs up Iceland! The next episode will bring us to Spitsbergen or Svalbard, about 1000 kilometers south of the North Pole and a few other places in Norway. Stay tuned.